Hello students, welcome to Legacy IIS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about a recent decision that has been taken by the government of India to rename a very important cultural city, religious city of India in the state of Uttarakhand that is Josimat. So we are going to discuss what is the region behind renaming of Josimat, how and historically the name of this city has changed and what is the overall cultural significance of this particular city. Now, first of all, apart from Josimat, one other city has also been decided to be renamed and that city is Kosia Kutoli. So, basically the proposal that has been accepted by the government of India, the proposal that was actually sent by the state government of Uttarakhand, that the city of Josimat be renamed to its ancient name that used to be Jyotirmat and also another city by the name of Kosia Kutoli should be renamed as Pargana Si Kaichi Dham Tehsi. And in this context, Union Ministry of Science and Technology has also given a no objection certificate. Now, you are, might be interested that what is the purpose of Ministry of Science and Technology to get involved here. Reason behind this is very simple. Actually, an organization by the name of Survey of India, it is under the Ministry of Science and Technology. And it is a Survey of India which prepares the map of the entire Indian landmass. And that is why renaming has to be introduced in the new map. And that is why the NOC from Ministry of Science and Technology was required. So last year, massive cracks had developed in many houses of the Joshimut, also a large scale landslides and its after effect we have witnessed. And this is largely due to the land subsidence. That means also we have to understand that Josimat is not only a religious and cultural center, but also prone to natural hazards, natural disasters, as it is located in seismic prone region of the Himalayan mountain system. On the other hand, the Kosia Kutoli Tehsil is well known for a very well known, we can say, saint of India, that is Neem Karoli Babas, and who established Kanchi Dham Ashram here. Now, let us try to understand this in more detail. So, first of all, if we talk about Josimat, which had to be renamed to Jyotirmat, what is the origin of this particular name? Now, we all know about 8th century philosopher and saint Adi Sankaracha. So, basically Jyotirmat or Jyotirpeet was established by Adi Sankaracha as one of the four cardinal peets or cardinal monasteries in Hinduism. And Adi Sankaracha is believed to have established this across India mainly with an objective or purpose of promoting the Advaita Vedanta philosophy. Now, what is Advaita Vedanta philosophy? We'll come to that later. The Jyotirmat was established for the preservation and dissemination of spiritual knowledges and practice that were inherent in the ancient Hindu scriptures, especially Vedas as well as Upanishads. Now, it is believed that when Adi Sankaracharya, or also popularly known as Adi Guru, he, when he was uh, when he came to Jyotirmat, he came, he came to Jyotirmat, he performed penance under a tree known as the Amar Kalpavrich. And actually, the naming of the Jyotirmat is believed to have originated from there. Because if you look at the old Sanskrit word, Jyoti, it means light. So basically, it is believed that Adi Guru Sankarachar has received divine light of knowledge when he was present in this place and he was sitting behind the tree Amar Kalpavich. So it is from that Jyoti, Jyotirmat name was given. However, later on, change name of name was changed from Jyotirmat to Josimat. Now, why it happened that we will also discuss. But before that, let us try to understand in brief details about the Advaita Vedanta philosophy of Adi Sankarachar and how Josimat is related to it. So, as we have discussed, Advaita Vedanta, two terms are there. Now, Vedanta basically means it the conclusion of the Veda, which is considered to be the most sacred book in the Hindu, Hindu scriptures. So, basically the conclusion of Vedas is called as Vedant and Advait basically means monism. So, he prop propagated and promoted the idea or concept of what we popularly call as radical non-dualism. What it basically means, it is a kind of revisionary worldview which derives from the ancient Upanishadic texts. Also, according to Advait Vedant and Advait Vedantins, that means the follower of Advait Vedantic philosophy, Upanishad reveal a fundamental principle of non-duality. Non-duality means it is believed that everything in the world is basically derived from the Brahman. 
which is the reality of all things. It is similar to what we can say as the sea water and waves. It, the waves that we see in the sea is nothing but one form of the sea water itself. Similarly, whatever we see around us in the universe, all living beings that we are present today, they are not separate entities, rather all of them are forms of the Brahma itself and that is the ultimate reality. So basically they seek to establish that the essential core of an individual self or one's self is Brahma or essential core of one's Atma we can say is Brahma and the fundamental thrust of this philosophy, Advaita Vedanta philosophy is that the Atma is pure non-intentional consciousness. And that is overall how we can summarize the philosophy propagated and given by Adi Sankaracha. Now, as we know, because he received the divine light in this region or in this place, that is why it is called as Jyotirmat. However, local population began referring to the area with passes of time as Josimat. Now, there is not some significant historical development that might have led to the change of name. It is believed by historian that this change was very gradual and organic in nature. And it was influenced by the regional languages, especially the Kumauni languages that people speak in this region, local dialects as well as the ease of pronunciation. The transition reflects basically what you can say as a linguistic and cultural evolution rather than a specific historical event. As we have discussed before, the naming of the place as Jyotirmat was something that happened in 8th century. So obviously, if you compare that since the advent of or coming up of British in India, almost 1100 years have passed, around uh, we can say 900 years have passed. So in 900,000 years, obviously you can expect the linguistic and cultural evolution to occur and that is what led to change of name from Jyotirmat to Josimat. Name came, to, came into use sometimes before the advent of British colonial rule and since British again started to prepare the map of India, started to put the names of cities in the government records and that is why as a result the name of Josimat was registered in the government records and obviously after India got independence, the same names that were used during British time actually was used for the government of India's records and purposes as well. So the question is that why now the government has taken the initiative to rename the city or we can say to change the name of city back to its original name. So it is believed that demand of change that largely has come from the population of the region itself is basically to honor the town's historical and religious importance. And in this context, the official recognition is believed to further cement the town's status as a spiritual center because Adi Sankarachar is a very well-known name in overall what you can say, culture and history of Hinduism as well as culture and history of India and his uh, association with this particular city, particular region is giving a spiritual kind of appearance to the city. So that is why it can attract more and more pilgrims to this particular place. It will boost this local tourism as well as economic development that will happen because mm -hmm. of tourism. However, also some of the critics argue that if we just focus on promoting tourism, by doing whatever it is necessary, unchecked tourism and development works can also be cited as a cause of environmental concern and the example which we already are witnessing in many regions of Himalayas due to unchecked growth of cities, due to unchecked development of infrastructure, what we are witnessing is flash, flash floods, we are witnessing landslides, we are witnessing different kind of natural hazard. It's particularly true because the region itself is lying in a very, very ecological sensitive region of Himalayas as well as India. Now, the second town that we have discussed whose name is going to be changed is Kosia Kutoli. Now, what is the name or the meaning of this term? So, first of all, Kosia Kutoli is made up of two words, Kosi and Kutoli. Kosi is simply, is being referred here as the name of the river, a very important river coming from the Nepal, entering into Uttara, Uttar Pradesh and then Bihar and is known as one of the devastating river of North India, North Bihar basically because of the flash floods that it causes. So this Kosi river flows through the Nainital district in Uttarakhand and is also important for the Kumau region of the given state. Along with adding to the scenic beauty, it matters to the local ecology as well as economy. So river is very, very important for the local population. So that is from where the word Kosi has come. Kutali basically means, in local language, it means a village or settlement. That means Kosia Kutoli simply means a settlement that is developed 
along the bank of river Kosi. Now, this is a very common way of referring the village settlements in India. And especially if we talk about the local Kumauri language, the Kumau people speak, naming a place after a prominent geographical feature like a river, hill, mountain is a common practice and that is why the name has been given as such. So, now what the decision has been taken to rename the city of Kusia Kutoli as Kanchi Dham Ashram. So, basically Kusia Kutoli came to be known for its association with Neem Karoli Baba and the Kanchi Dham Ashram which he founded in 1962. Also known as Neeb Karori Baba, he was a renowned Hindu guru as well as saint with followers in India as well as outside of India. And although he passed away in 1973, he is revered to be to date for his teachings and also he was a very prominent figure who propagated and promoted the bhakti yoga and devotion to the God and that is why he is even revered today as a, as a prominent Hindu guru and saint. Now we talk about him, the followers of what we can call as Neem Karoli Baba is not only restricted to India, rather his followers are and disciples we can say are some well known figures such as Apple co-founder Steve Jobs, former university professor of Harvard University, prestigious university of US, Ram Das. Now Ram Das is also is believed to have changed his name from Richard Alpert after he became the disciple of the Baba plus Kirtan singer Krishna Das who helped spread his teachings globally. Now numerous anecdotes and stories of Neem Karoli Baba perform, performing miracles where he supposed to have materialized objects and also healed the sick contributed to the legend around him in this city. And thousands of devotees flocked to this city of Kanchi Dham Ashram that is situated in this Kusia Kutoli every year especially on 15th of June that is the anniversary of the ashram's founding. So obviously, as you can see, the city or the small town of the Kusia Kutoli is strongly connected and associated with the Kanchi Dham Ashram and that is the region why government has decided to change its name on the name of the ashram that has been developed by or that has been set up by the Neem Karoli Baba. Now, this is not the first time the naming of or the names of the city in India has uh, is going to change. There are a lot of such instances from the past to present where it has happened. The most recent examples of the popular cities, well-known cities whose name has changed. You obviously, in 2018, the name of Allahabad was changed to Prayagraj. Before that, in 2016, the name of Gurugaon was changed to Gurugram. Similarly, in South India also, as we can see, a lot of cities and the names have changed. For example, from Mysore to Mysuru, Bangalore to Bangalore, from Mangalore to Mangalore, Mangalore. Bijapur to Vijayapur, Bombay to Mumbai that happened a long time ago in 1995. Then you have Kolkata to Kolkata, Kanpur to Kanpur. Then we have Madras to Chennai and similar other examples as you can see. Even in the state of Uttarakhand, last year itself, a well-known hill stations of Lansdowne was actually, uh, the name of the city of Lansdowne was changed to the Jaswandgarh to honor Indian soldier who fought valiantly during the Indochina war. This is something that keeps happening every now and then and that is nothing but new uh, what you can say addition in the changing of the name of cities in India. That is all for this particular video. I hope you understood about the importance and significance especially of Josimat and why it is going to be renamed as Jyotil. Thank you very much.